who St. John's Redmen start a pair of junior college speedsters in the backcourt this season. Number three, Boo Harvey at the point, 21 assists, 14 point average, as St. John's has won four of their first five. Number four, Michael Porter, 14 point average and seven rebounds per game. The UCLA Bruins have coach Walt Hazard looking to a higher source as they have staggered out of the starting gate, losing three of their first four. Player and leader of this young team, Pooh Richardson. Some feel Richardson may be the premier point guard in the country. Both teams still in the lab in this Big East Pac-10 matchup, St. John's and UCLA. This is Pauley Pavilion on the UCLA campus in West Los Angeles. Going into this game, the St. John's Redmen 4-1, UCLA 1-3. And this ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by Honda, who invites you to experience the Accord LXI four-door sedan at your local Honda dealer. By Nike, makers of the Air Revolution. By AT&T, the right choice. And by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. This is the sixth meeting in this series. St. John's has won the last three. Walt Hazard has never defeated Lou Carnesecca. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to our second week of college basketball here on ABC. Immediately following our game between St. John's and uh, UCLA, we're going to go live to Santa Clara, Cuba, as the U.S. amateur boxing team takes on the team considered the best in the world right now. Once again, I should say, perhaps, Cuba. So you'll enjoy that right after our basketball game today. Now, about these two teams, I mentioned that they are still in the lab, still looking for combinations. Still looking for chemistry. Here are pregame comments from the coaches. I would hope our strength is divided. I don't know yet. I'm not, I, don't, we don't, I don't have a handle on this club yet. We've only played four or five ball games. We have a little strength in the back court. We have a little strength up front. Now if we get it all together, then we'll be better. Well, right now, in, in the meat of the game, when the game is decided, the time that I call the moment of truth, when you can either capture the game or it gets away from you. Uh, we've had a little problem. We played against very good basketball teams in, in trying to establish a chemistry and identity. So, uh, you know, through adversity, we get stronger. You know, Dick Vitale, I sort of think both coaches need mortar and brick, the way they keep talking about rebuilding. Keith, I tell you, both guys sound like chemists in a lab instead of basketball coaches. But for Walt Hazard's basketball team to make a strong run, for some Pac-10 honors in Chase, Arizona. They need a great performance out of Pooh Richardson. Pooh's a tremendous talent, but has not really made the big play in the last four minutes in their really heartbreaking losses. Interesting, too, that Walt Hazard has decided to go with three sophomores along his front line today. But on the other hand, there's two rookies in the backcourt for Lou Karnasek's Redmond. Well, they're amazing. He's got the two little guys that want to go, go, go. They want to run, baby, run. Porter and Harvey, tremendous ju juco players now playing on a major level. Luke Quanaseca wants to put the hole on him. But the key for that basketball team is Shelton Jones. Will the real Shelton Jones arrive here at Pauley Pavilion? If he does, Louis Quanaseca can get a W. But you know what he found out, Keith? He found out they serve Linguini west of the Mississippi. <laughs> well, this is a marketing game. This is a game of national posture of image because both these teams do eventually play for a conference title. For another. Why do we do all this? Once we understand how these things can destroy long distance service, we can build- Oh, JC. Lou Harvey and Michael Porter, 5'11", 6'1". Incidentally, during their two years in Pasadena, Texas, San Jacinto, JC won 73, lost one. Now for UCLA, all sophomores on the front line. It's a big one. Greg Foster, 7-footer. Kevin Walker, 6'10". Trevor Wilson, 6'8". In the backcourt, junior Pooh Richardson at point. Senior Dave Emmel leading the team in scoring. Dick Vitale, your keys on the outcome of this game. Well, first of all, Keith, for them to win St. John's, they have to control the penetration ability of Richardson, who can break the defenses down. And they need a big game from Shelton Jones. He can't disappear like he did against Kansas in their loss. For UCLA, they got to play at a fast pace, and they have to have good shot selection and patience because Louis Corniseca will zone, even though throughout his career, Keith, he's been a defensive man-to-man -man coach. The officials for the ball game today, Booker Turner, the veteran referee, umpires are Jimmy Clark and Bob Garibaldi. And so we go from Pauley Pavilion, once known as the House of Champions, but it's been a while since they hung a banner beyond the Pac-10 Conference 
in Pauley Pavilion. Two very interesting things to watch here. The young front line of UCLA. BYU beat UCLA shooting 62% and they shot everything inside. Well, they were able to get the ball on the interior. Their post-defensive play has been really very, very difficult. They have a lot of inexperienced people across the front. Baldy comes down with a tip. And this is Michael Porter. Out in front is Boo Harvey. Harvey is from St. Albans, New York. Even though he wound up at San Jacinto, he is from the area, and Michael Porter is out of Virginia. So they're not exactly from down in Texas, even though they did two years of junior college work there and developed as players. But, uh, Porter was on his way to Virginia Tech, and uh, Harvey was going to Syracuse, but they got sidetracked by Graves and Pooh Richardson answered. Well, that's really important for Walt Hazard that Pooh Richardson can hit the perimeter shot. If there's one negative about his game, it's his range as a shooter. Full court press, 2-2-1. Two, two, Interesting to see if the two rookies can handle it. They're having trouble, and there it is. They turn it over. They got Harvey and Porter trapped in the backcourt. Harvey should be able to break that key with some real dribble penetration and then hitting a guy posting up into the middle of the floor. Baldy's got a post up. He's a good passer. Baldy still dragging a leg. Had Achilles uh, tendon surgery a year ago, and he's not fully recovered. Inside, they take it. Remember, these are all sophomores. This is Foster. Missed the shot. Went across the iron on the backboard. It is off St. John. Foster has really improved as a player on the interior. He's learned to control his court temperament. He used to really get frustrated if someone laid a hand on him. He's very active for a seven-footer. Emil out of the corner. The team's leading scorer won't go down. Jones the rebound. Playing with goggles because he had detached retina surgery. Goggles bothering some. This is Boo Harvey. Goes inside to Shelton Jones. Quick spin, baseline, score. No one, no one rotates over to give any kind of help, but you could see why Lou Corner second. And all the St. John's fans get so excited about the ability of Shelton Jones. Here's the entry from Harvey to Jones. Now watch his baseline spin move. He, there he is rotating, flies along the baseline. No one comes over to give any kind of help, and he gets the easy left. Greg Foster getting the foul as Jones just simply throws him on the move, and it's a 5-2 to two St. John's lead. Well, I'll tell you, if the real Shelton Jones arrives here at Pauley Pavilion, it'll be tough in that front court of UCLA. Going with that 1-3-1 much of the time, this is Trevor Wilson out of the corner, and he knocks it through. He's one of the sophomores on the front line. Now they go back into the press and back court. They froze him back there last time and turned it over. Baldy comes to help ahead to Shelton Jones. That's what I was talking about earlier. They got to bring Baldy to the middle of the press and use him as a relay man. Patience is one of the ingredients missing in the Porter uh, Harvey pair, but they're learning it from Lou Carnesecca. See, notice how Richardson won't play up tight on him, Pete, because he knows he's a great penetrator. This is Porter, and Matt Bruss inside the Baldy, and Baldy shoots it over Walker and got a roll. They got to get more offense out of Marco Baldy. They don't look inside to him enough. At the end of the year last year, he was a very positive player. He's starting to improve, but this year, he just hasn't scored. St. John's by three. Trevor Wilson looks in, can't find the big man. They sometimes go inside and disappear, but Walker on the baseline can't get it. The rebound goes to Shelton Jones. That's two for him, and here comes Harvey. That was a good entry into Walker. Walker's a very active player who's got great range as a shooter. Porter. They're going to let him shoot the ball, Keith, and he's sending a message out to Walt Hazard. Throw away the scouting report because I can shoot the rock. He's averaging seven rebounds a game, too, for a 6-1. I don't think he's 6-1, but he is a great leaper, and there's Richardson with an answer inside the key. Richardson with great penetration. Porter is a tremendous leaper, as you mentioned. His vertical jump has been said to be over 45 inches. I asked him yesterday, and all he said was high enough. Well, he won the slam dunk contest in a McDonald's High School All-American game. Russ, all the way! Surprising play with the drive by Russ. I thought he was going to drop the bounce pass. Why didn't the UCLA man plan himself and take the charge? Yeah. He stepped out of the way. Indiana, Kentucky, Notre Dame, did square their bodies. 
There's Sir Walter has it. I love to have a little fun with Walter. Looks like Richardson got a finger in his eye or something. But the Walker just stepped out of the way and let him go. Well, talking to Walter today, you know, he's really mentioned, he said, Dick, you keep mentioning that these kids go elsewhere from out on the coast, like Leron Ellis and Sean Higgins and Scott Williams. He said, but academic requirements here are getting so tough, it makes it difficult to recruit a lot of the top-notch players. Foster comes outside to handle it. Baldy on him. Inside Wilson being checked by Crust now. Hand to man defense by St. John's playing soft on Richardson. They're going to let him shoot. The shot. Foster pushed off. They're going to let Richardson shoot the ball, Keith. They're going to say, we're not going to allow you to penetrate Pooh Richardson. We're going to let you shoot the perimeter jump shot. Matt Brust will bring it in. Greg Foster now, two fouls. That's Boo Harvey, and they're trying to trap him in backcourt. Baldy helps ahead to Brust. This well, time, Matt slows it down and looks for help. Well coached against the press. They simply post up Baldy and get the ball up the court easily. Brust to the baseline. That's Jones short. Rebound, Wilson. This is Dave Emmel, leads the team in scoring, their top three-point shooter. He's by far the best shooter from outside. Emmel's a good shooter. They got to really find him on the floor. He was the leading three-point shooter in the back 10 last year. They take it inside. Ball stolen by Baldy. Tried to get the ball into Foster, and Baldy picked his pocket. And Harvey shoots a bullet inside to Jones. I think Will has got to get a timeout. They're really breaking down defensively, Keith. Giving up a lot of easy baskets along that baseline. Sheldon Jones now with five points, and it's a seven-point St. John's lead. Shelton Jones is a teaser. You see that great talent, and you say, why does it disappear? Emil into the paint. Caught off there in the richardson Emil game so far. Good defense by St. John's, giving a lot of help, closing up the driving lane. Inside, this time to Wilson. That's a nice pass by Foster. Excellent interior pass by Foster down to Wilson. Wilson's a great athlete. He can run, he can jump, he can shoot. He's got tremendous pulse, tremendous potential. Shelton Jones handles it out in front. Now they'll go to the point man, Boo Harvey. St. John's is really getting outstanding execution out of their half-court offense. Well, they've let Harvey alone. They've given him the shot. Who hasn't taken it as yet? Yeah, see how he's playing off him? I'd come out and shoot that, Keith. He's got to shoot that ball. Three-second call against St. John. 14.09 to go in the first half. 13 to 8, the Red Men lead. Four. He kicks the ball back out, help and recover defense. Outstanding by St. John's. They reverse the ball back to Richardson. Look at the defense right there by Harvey. Tremendous defense by Harvey and also Porter. Now we take a look right here. Emil kicks it back out inside to Foster. Foster with a little dump down to the interior and a strong body of Mr. Wilson gets the easy basket inside. No lineup changes. We come back to play. UCLA with the ball. Trevor Wilson being checked by Brust. Walker comes out and fought for a three. Short off the front iron. Baldy the rebound. John St. John's running it now as Michael Porter brings it up. Lou Harvey has not scored. Everybody else in the St. John's lineup has. They're really getting great execution here in their half-court game. He's got a great baseline move, Jones. Got the basket. And the lead goes back to seven for St. John. He's had some amazing halves, Keith, over his career. He's had halves where he's been absolutely blank, got the Ziggy, didn't score, and other halves where he's went bananas and scored better than 20 and a half. He's got seven points so far in the ball game. The man that's been very, very quiet so far for UCLA is Walker. I don't know. I think I've called his name but one time. Well, he took one jump shot. I'll tell you something. In practice, he didn't miss any. There he is, Keith. He heard you. Short, rebound, quarter. This 6 1 kid is averaging uh, seven of game. Pops it up. Soft, but won't go. Rebound, Foster. Way up, and here comes UCLA running. Wilson won't go. Rebound inside Jones. Jones had great position. Hazard wants to play at a fast pace. He wants to play up tempo. He knows St. John's wants to play like it's Times Square. They want to pack it in and get real 
really good ball movement to get good shot selection. Charles Washington on the sidelines waiting to come in for UCLA. Probably for Walker. Pass is intercepted by Emil. Porter got careless with it. Who Richardson to the corner takes it inside. Whistle foul. Basket no good. They're getting the ball out off the rebound. The transition game really starts with three phases. One with possession, two to attack. And the third phase is the conversion area. They did not converge here. There's Jones right now without the ball. Let's see if he moves well without it. Good defense right now being played. Now he comes off a screen of Baldy. Oh, Baldy laid a great screen on the inside. Now he's posted. He gets the ball down on a box. They're going to give him the little jump shot. Faces up, squares, and he delivers it. Richardson made the first free throw. 15 to 9, and short with that one. Well, he, this kid here is really cocky. He was telling you and I before the game, he said, hey, I'm going to have a great, great game today, but not like that, Jerome. That's an A-B, an air ball. And that one. 12-28 to go in the first half. St. John's ball. All five people in the front court as UCLA shows press. St. John's about scored them 11 to 5. Ball is stolen by Richardson on the blind side. Banks it off the iron. No. Rebound. Who stayed with it and got it. He beat Brust on that rebound and misses on the baseline. Wilson puts it up and gets the foul on Bowdy. Great athletic play by Pooh Richardson, the little guard. This is his little jump shot. Comes down with the offensive rebound and then explodes on the baseline. There's little Pooh Richardson now. He's going to shoot the little jumper. There it is now. Comes off the rim. Well, look at that great second effort. Here he goes with the big people. He takes it away from Brust. And now watch this move along the base. He sees an opening. Oh, he's got great quickness, Keith. His quickness is reminiscent of yours going to the goal. <laughs> Wilson drops one through. Five-point lead now for the Red Men, 15 to 10. His half-brother plays for New Mexico. He told me that his half-brother really did it against him down in Albuquerque in the NIT second round. Bruins have cut it now to four. Barbie in backcourt, Richardson on him. Porter ahead to Baldy. Baldy checked by Rochland, and they get it ahead into the front court of Jones. UCLA's got to try to match up on Baldy and take away that outlet that they have. His brother's name, by the way, is Hunter. Stars for the next one. Pass is too high by Porter inside, and Wilson steps on the line as he tried to clear it out quickly. So Trevor Wilson had the ball. But he hits the baseline, and Booker Turner sends him on his way at this commercial break. Not the easiest place in the world to get to, either, I would suspect. You know, I did, back in 1974, we first started going into Cuba. The AIVA, the International Tournament, was held in Havana. And uh, we have not fared well, our young people, since uh, we started that home-and-home -home series with the Cubans. Too much better here, obviously, but that's a tough trip. But it's certainly good seasoning for a young boxing team. Carlos Palomino's doing a commentary. There's a look at Sidney Wicks on the sideline. Was part of that great tradition during the John Wooden era. The greatest achievement in all of sports, Keith Jackson, I have to believe, was John Wooden winning 10 national championships in 12 years. Unbelievable. St. John's playing it in. Russ pass deflected out of bounds by Richardson. Boo Harvey still quiet, has not scored in the game. Doing a good job running the offense, though, Keith. He's getting the ball to key people. Harvey's got three assists. He's distributing the basketball. Turnover. That's five now for St. John's. UCLA has one. Harvey came out of high school. He was labeled along with three others as the four premier point guards in high school. Richardson was one, Strickland was one, and Jeff Lebo out of Carlisle, PA, playing now for North Carolina, was the other. Rushland's he first shoot in the ball game is short off the iron, and Michael Porter has the rebound for St. John's. And this time, Harvey moves it up in a hurry. He really wants to go, go, go. He wants to play at 100 miles an hour. Ball is knocked away. As you have into the ball game for UCLA, Gerald Matkins in his guard. So they play off him. They're going to let him shoot the ball. It'll be St. John's ball out of bounds. Gerald Matkins is a freshman out of Merced, California. He's been the first guard off the bench all season long. Or well, all has UCLA Bruins. They're really high on the ball. Hazard told me they expect great things out of Matkins. 
handling the ball in front is Harvey. You'll see that Porter will take it inside. Great leaper. Now Michael comes out to on top. And they're giving Blue Harvey all the room in the world. If he wants it, he can have it all day long. Inside the front. Should have been a walk right there. Hit. They get the offensive foul, but they missed the walk in violation on Brush. Ball drops in softly, and it's 17 11. Uh, Williams will get credit for the basket. He's been a positive player off the bench, giving him a lot of productivity. That's Jason Williams. Jason Williams uh, is a sophomore out of uh, New York City, 6'9 and 200, and going to be a very good player, it appears. They enter the ball into the gut of the defense. Oh, right there. See him pick up his pivot foot? He picked his pivot foot, did a little disco dance. You know, UCLA scores five turnovers, but they've only got one point off those turnovers, Keith. Richardson will play it in. Six point St. John's lead. 10 33 to go in the first half. Charles Washington will be trying out for the Canadian national team for the Olympic game this coming summer. Played for Jack from Toronto. Toronto. Foster used up his dribble and then for a moment looked like he was in trouble. Matkins handling the ball. Very, very quick young player. Whistle inside where the big boys are banging away. And that's on Brust. Matt Rust is a tenacious player. Look at Harvey right now playing off Richardson. He says, yeah, Pooh, you can handle it all you want. Look at him, number three. He's not even guarding 24. He knows he's a great penetrator, and he doesn't want him allowed to take the ball down the lane. So he stays two, three steps off. Jones on Washington right now. And outside for St. John's, number 22, uh, Elander Lewis, who's become a role player and done very well. That's good penetration down off that baseline that time, and the Bruins cut the St. John's lead to four. Richardson with seven. Wilson now with six. They did a great job isolating, getting Richardson a one-on-one -on -one situation. He's dynamite with the basketball. He's got more moves than Willie Moscone in terms of tricks trying to run a pool table. That's Russ. No. Over the top. Williams. Foul. Came down over the back. And gets his first foul. Here's Boo Richardson, one-on-one -on -one against Harvey. A little showtime, a little party time. He spins. No one rotates over. A little bit too late with the rotation. And he's got the little layup off the glass. St. John's with four team fouls. UCLA with two here in the first half. Four points. St. John's lead. Inside. Wilson. Three men around him. Forces it and got it. That's a tremendous move, Keith. He has three people, as you just stated, all around him and uses the great up and under move to get the layup. This is William. They've been ranting and raving about him all day. He is going to be a solid player. He's put on 50 pounds since arriving from Christ the King High School in New York City. In it goes to Wilson against Brust. Snap pass to Foster. Got it. Good pass by Wilson. They need big point production out of Foster. He's got a lot of talent. He's got to learn to move a little bit better without the ball on the inside. Lewis trapped for a moment, found Brust over the 10-second line. St. John's lead is only two. Ball is stolen. And foul Lewis. Matkins with those quick hands steals the ball from Elanda Lewis. Watch Trevor Wilson now, number four, with an excellent pass. Here he is against Matt Russ, one of the real tenacious defenders, a kid who gets the most out of his talent. He fires the ball inside to Foster. Foster with a little jump hook. He looks at it, he says, please go down. Over the years, many cars have rolled across the drawing board of cartoonist Carl Urbano. Still, Mr. Urbano's favorite car is a Honda. He and his family own 10 Hondas in all. So you might say, Honda has helped draw the family together. With so many automatic features, Zenith's new smaller VHS camcorder not only lets you take perfect pictures, it lets you show them. Again and again, Zenith Quality. Performance isn't just the total number of miles driven. 
but rather how your car performed when you drove each one of them. Give your car the good life with STP gas treatment. Fancy perfuming aftershave. It's got to be a quarterback's locker. Real guys who get mud on their uniforms use rugged, honest stuff. Ice blue aqua velva. There's something about today's aqua velva man. Look for aqua velva Christmas gift sets. Listen to the sound of a closer, smoother shave. Williams Electric Shave sets up my beard. So my shaver shaves closer, and I get a smoother shave. Listen to Williams Electric Shave. Mm. The sound of a closer, smoother shave. The Chicago Bears, they're 10 and 2 in playoff bound. The same holds true for the San Francisco 49ers. The showdown on ABC's Monday Night Football. Next Saturday afternoon, we'll be in Raleigh, North Carolina. That means North Carolina State hosting Kansas, the Jayhawks. And I want to tell you something. You talk about <laughs> snake pits and a tough place to win. You go in and play the wolf back at home, and you got all you want. Well, you sound like an advertising guy for Larry Brown. I can hear him saying that already. You talk about it's two true. showmen. It is true. Talk about two showmen, two real New Yorkers, Larry Brown and Jimmy Valvano. Charismatic, dynamic, and Larry Brown, to me, is one of the great, great teachers of the game of basketball. And if he yeah. remains in college, he could be a Hall of Famer. MK started that tradition there at NC State with that new building, the Reynolds Coliseum, and boy, they've just gotten tougher and tougher <laughs> over the years, and Jimmy Valvano has done very, very well, well with using that tradition. Just as KU, well, Kansas beat uh, St. John at home for their 50th consecutive uh, win at home. I love their chant. Rock Chalk Jayhawk over at Lawrence, Kansas. They go wild. All right. They turn it over. And here comes St. John's out in front. That's Lewis with the ball. And it goes to Harvey, and he is still not scored, and the rebound is up in the hands of Trevor Wilson. I really like Wilson Keith. He's an athlete. Foster, back to Wilson. I like this guy. I like and this guy. For a three pointer. They love him here in Tinseltown. Look at the intensity. Number four, Trevor Wilson. He's 6'8", he's from out of Reseda, California. Look at that great step by Richardson. And there's the little dump down to Foster. Foster gives it to his sidekick inside. Here goes the little pump fake, the strong move to the goal. Oh, you gotta like Trevor Wilson. You know, Russ, the drug player, as we take a look at the very solid walk hazard, and now Louis Karnasek, Marishna Koff on the sideline. Ten points now for Trevor Wilson. UCLA's free throwing their last game. They were five out of 16. And yeah, they've really had it tough. They lost two games they would have won against Temple and also New Mexico, but they shot poorly down the stretch. I love John Cheney's Temple team. Mark Macon could be the best freshman in the nation. 17 fouls now on St. John's, two on UCLA. Harvey holds out in front. Baldy comes to help. Look, he's not going to guard him. That's Williams. Williams, uh, somebody got away with a foul. They whacked him out over the arm there. They'll roll it to the floor. Possession will be UCLA on the on the jump ball. The Bruins have Matkins and Richardson in the backcourt. Up front, it's Rushland, Foster, and Wilson. See, there's a little struggling going on right now by St. John's Keith, and this is where Sheldon Jones has got to show big-time leadership and want the ball. He started off on fire the last few minutes. He sort of disappeared. But if you make him play defense, Dick, I think he might take away a little something from his offense as Charles Buckman puts it up. Ball ricochets to Orlando Lewis. He figured to be one of the starting guards. Porter right now is on the bench, and Orlando's getting playing time. Boo Harvey handling the point. Last year, Orlando was the six-minute man. He'd start, play six minutes, and then go to the sideline the rest of the game. He told me today at the pre-workout, he says, I'm not the six-minute man anymore. We got a hold uh, called on Trevor Wilson down inside, and that'll be the third team foul on UCLA. First on Wilson. Take a look at Wilson right now, trying to check number 31. He's got to see the ball in the man. He's trying to fight over the screen. They switch. Look at a good switch right there. Excellent switch, but they get the foul on four prior to the switch. They look inside. They got Jason Williams playing inside now. The big man, Baldy, not as active as uh, they hope he will be during the Big East Conference season. He's wide open. Give it to Baldy for the foul shot right there. Shoot it, Marco. Good from there. 
Thank Thanks you, Mark. Hey, remind me of Cedric Jenkins, who you wanted to shoot. We coached him last week. <laughs> oh, it's so great coaching here. You never lose a game. Yeah, that's right. Atkins the best. handles the ball. He's very, very quick. Atkins can play either one in a point position, position or the second guard. <laughs> Richardson found the hole. He loves to drive. He loves to go to the basket. Who has got to work a little bit more on his jump shot, but he loves to drive. He's got nine points in the ball game now. UCLA. This system started with John Wooden. When you you get a basket, put the heat on him, and uh, force another turnover from St. John's. And this is Wilson Powell by Valdi. St. John's has had several breakdowns against the 2-2-1 press. And that's really been a great help for UCLA. And UCLA has now caught him and a chance to go ahead. Here comes Pooh Richardson, one of the five best point guards in the nation. One of the members of my old Thomas Edison team, a creator, an innovator. He can make things happen that a coach cannot design on the floor. Chance for the Bruins to get their first lead, and they're still throwing rocks up there. We take a look right now as they advance the ball up the court. Look at Richardson's penetration, and there's the reach in by Baldy. Definitely fouled him. Yep. Foul shooting is still bad. I would go to Shelton Jones right now. I'd reverse the ball and try to post up Shelton. You need to get him back in the game. Yeah. He hasn't yeah. been heard from in quite a while. Well, he's drifting on a perimeter. He's got to go down. Look at 31. Stand and watch the action. Not a bad move by Lewis, Lewis there for the bucket. Orlando Lewis, 6'4. He's got good range as a shooter. He's a three point threat. He's got good range from deep. St. John's back to the lead by two. 23 21. Matkins, a little late with his pass to Rossland. By the time he got it there, he lost his chance to drive it. Wilson hits it. He's playing like a real bona fide star player. He's got good hands. Good spin on a baseline, an excellent touch. Trevor Wilson, as the Bruins tie, has 12 points. See, they're hesitating getting the board to Baldy. They had Baldy earlier. Harvey got the basket foul call. Chance for three on Boo's first success from the field. Boo Harvey with the penetration came out of Andrew Jackson High School. Signed with Syracuse. There's a look at Luigi Corneseca, one of my favorite coaches. Here goes Harvey. He's going to try to break the defense down. He pulls up, has good presence. There's the little foul over the top by Richardson, and he converts it. Lewis is out. Porter back into the ball game. Change for St. John. He signed originally with Syracuse, but then they had Sherman Douglas, and it was no PT with Mr. Douglas there. Decided to come home to New York. And Louis Cornicek is very happy, and then he brought, brought along his sidekick, Michael Porter. 26-23, Redmen. Porter picks up Richardson out on top. That leaves uh, Harvey on Matkins. Porter almost with a theft. Richardson drives it, forced it, and blocked by Jones. Shelton Jones said, no way. You're not going to bring it in the lane right yeah, here. Yeah, but that's a little shoot. too much. Uh, I'm going to do it myself. A yeah. little mustard, a little yep. hot dog, a little showmanship, a little playgroundish, and you don't win doing no, it. No, you don't. You're right, Coach. I like the way you broke that down. There we take a look at it right here. Get the hot dog out. Get the mustard. Look at this. Aw, come on, Pooh. Save that for South Philly, not a Paulie Pavilion. Rushman takes it back inside. Foster. Foster takes his shot, missed it. Rebound, Porter to Baldy. And now Jones will bring it up with Harvey. It's amazing the way Porter can rebound. As you said earlier, seven rebounds a game, this little guy. Look at that reach. He's got the foul. I mean, he hangs it up there, three and a half feet off the floor. Amazing. You should have seen him win the slam dunk contest over guys like Tom Hammonds, Purvis Ellison, Tito Horford over at the McDonald's All-American game. It was amazing. Take a look at Temple right here, beating a good Rhode Island team. John's got another good team. Oh, John Chaney's an outstanding coach. He was War Hazard's phys ed teacher back in Philadelphia. We will have them down the road against UNLV. Ooh, Storm and Norman Sloan, he just blew away Florida State. 
Florida State gave Oklahoma a pretty good rouse earlier in the week, losing by two to the Sooners. Sooners have really improved defensively. Billy Tubbs has got them guarding some people. They could be really tough all year long. 28-23, St. John's by five, four minutes to go, first half. Won't go down for him as Walker is back in the game. Oh, the Bruins and uh, Boo Harvey hurries it up. You think Lou's heart skips just a little beat when those kids get, get going lickety split. Oh, Jones missed it off the baseline. Baldy had it. Rebound is Porter. Porter with the offensive rebound. Louis Carnes second in one of their games earlier this year at the Joe Lapchick tournament. He yelled at Harvey. He said, Harvey, slow it down. You're going 100 miles an hour. He says, I am playing slow, coach. <laughs> 9-2 run now for St. John's. They've run off seven straight points to lead by seven for the second time in the game. Williams comes out of there with it. Ball is badly thrown by Boo Harvey. The body contortions of Kornisicker on the sideline are amazing. Yeah, I, I mean, he is Mayor Koch's award as the man of the year in New York. He hates to leave the Big Apple. We told them they got Linguini here in California. <laughs> company but we'll give you a chance to work where there's always a challenge we'll give you opportunities to learn to develop to perfect skills that you thought were beyond your reach we'll help you build a career a career that can reward you for the rest of your life we're not a company we're your country we're the army the navy the air force the marines we're the armed forces it's a great place to start who says Chevy's better than Ford? USAC tested standard half-tons with their best automatics and half-ton payloads. Zero to 60, 40 to 55, pylon course handling, full-size Chevy beat Ford. Level and uphill towing acceleration. Chevy with Vortec V6 beat Ford. Which truck should you be driving? USAC test just answered it. Now, get $500 cash back on new full-size CK pickups. Hey, Chevy truck! For the first winter ever, there's actually an antifreeze that will guarantee your radiator. The antifreeze, new Prestone Advanced Formula. Use it after using Prestone Super Flush. And should our protection fail, no matter which model car you have, we'll pay for your radiator repairs. New Prestone Advanced Formula. The antifreeze that guarantees your radiator. America, Danny Manning leads the Kansas Jayhawks against the North Carolina State Wolfpack next Saturday on ABC's College Basketball. All right, there are stats and there are stats. Now, if you just take on face value uh, what's going on here, you would think that uh, UCLA would be leading, but we're, as uh, St. John just turned it over nine times to the Bruins, too. They have, at the same time, uh, dominated the backboards, and they're better at the foul line. Well, right there we saw a breakdown defensively by Trevor Wilson, but a breakdown by his teammate, Kevin Walker, did not come over and give any help at all on Shelton Jones. Inside to Rushland, being checked by Jason Williams. Trevor Wilson outside for two, won't go down. The ball is slapped into the hands of Boo Harvey, and St. John's is running. Order is sawed off on the sideline. Now they'll set it up. UCLA does a good job getting back defensively in transition. That's Harvey. It's off the front iron, and the rebound goes to Rushlin. Richardson, good pass down on the baseline to Dave Immel. That's an NBA pass. Richardson's going to be an outstanding point guard in the NBA with the 24-second clock. He almost stole that ball right there. Shelton Jones brings it into the corner. He's been pretty quiet except for the drive a moment ago when he didn't get the basket. He stands around a lot. Watch 31, Keith. He doesn't really move well without the ball. He's got to learn to be a little bit more active when he doesn't have the ball. Williams slapped up once. Porter's inside, gets the ball on the baseline. 6-1, and he goes in there, and he beats the two big horses. Louis Parnasecker does a great job out of his half-court offense. He's an excellent teacher. They get good screen in action, and they play as a team, something he constantly emphasizes. They go back inside to Williams. Won't go. Rebound Walker. 
as he had position on Baldy. Immel hurries it up. This is Walker for outside for three. NBA, nothing but nylon by Kevin Walker. He's a long-range bomber. It was a seven-point lead. Now it's a two-point lead with 1.20 to go in the first half. He's a guy that can handle that trifecta. Do they use Baldy as a guy to break the press in the middle of it? He's a space eater, Baldy. He's not a guy, Keith, that's going to score a lot for you. He just takes a lot of space, lays a lot of screens. He'll get more active, though, as he gets that leg back in shape, too, I expect. Gets more confidence in it. They had that heel surgery you talked about. Inside, Williams. Baldy almost over the back, but he went straight up and got away with it. Bruins run it. And Rushland can't buy it. He's a streak shooter, and it's been cold today. You can see the frustration on Richardson's face. He gives the ball up. He wants that assist. He said, come on, guys, deliver it. I'm getting you the ball. Half a minute to go as the Red Men walk it up, leading by two over UCLA. This is the kind of score Louis Cornesecca likes. Keep the game in his 60s and have a chance to win. UCLA wants to get into the 80s. Jones handles it. Shot clock's off. Porter, trap. Jones won't go. Foul by Williams. Foul by number 11, Williams. He's got three personal fouls. That was a bit of a silly foul. Jason trying to go to the board, but there was a man between him and the board, and you can't walk up his back. Really a poor foul right there. We take a look at Paulie Pavilion. That's what we have for you at halftime. You know, you think about Paulie Pavilion and all those banners, Keith. I think the real apathy for this program and the disenchantment to reach the depths of despair as far as I'm concerned, opening game less than 2,800 fans. I can't believe it. I, I guess I have such great expectations of UCLA, and to me that's a sad commentary after all the greatness that John Wooden brought this program. A little different strokes out here, you know. I know they like to go to the beach or whatever. They buy the ticket but don't want to come. Well, they got 8,500 season tickets sold, but you don't have 8,500 here today. And that's really sad because when you think of UCLA, you're thinking of one of the solid gold programs, and now they've just become another program. Three throws, ties the game. Bruins now five out of nine from the foul line. 30-30 ball game. That's up by Harvey, and it is short. And we go to the clubhouse at halftime, all even at 30. St. John's on two occasions had a seven-point lead against UCLA, but having trouble protecting the ball, and it's all even. We'll return after this commercial and a word from our local station. Uh, what points they have, which is 30. Wilson has 12 points and three rebounds. And Trevor Wilson, number four right here. Very, very active first half. He's a very strong player, good inside power player. He's got great athletic ability. He can be a star once he develops the mentality that he can be one and plays with some confidence. Now we take a look at Pooh Richardson. Number 24 is just one of the great guards in America when he's playing under control. He's a slashing, driving kind of player. Nine points, four assists at halftime for Pooh Richardson. Frankly, the faithful of UCLA basketball are not quite used to seeing their Bruins in a 30-30 tie at halftime. Well, I'll tell you, the faithful at UCLA have really been disappointed losing three games in a row. But remember this, Keith. They lost last year four games in a row after winning their first three. They beat North Carolina, won their first three, lost four, and then won 22 out of 25. I believe the talent level here is good enough and I don't want people to hear me in a mediocre Pac-10 conference that they can get a lot of W's, but Arizona by far is the class of the Pac-10. Well, um, th there's one thing, though, that, that you, you're seeing more and more teams are giving up on the cupcake early season schedule for the sake of wins and going out and bumping heads with people uh, who can beat them. Well, I think that's great. As long as I don't have to play that schedule, yeah. we don't want to see too many Kansas and Pomona pitches. I know Larry Brown will remind me of that when we come down into a rally for that Kansas and uh, North Carolina State game next week. All right, we're all even. 30-30 at halftime, and right now we're going to join college basketball's player of the year from a year ago, David Robinson. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Dave Robinson. Today I want to talk about shot blocking. Shot blocking can be the cause of foul trouble or being out of position for the defensive rebound, but if used the right way, it can be a very effective defensive weapon. The hardest thing to learn about shot blocking is when to block the shot. One of the best times to go for the shot block is when the offensive man drives in for a layup. Another good time to go for the block is when the defensive man gets beat by the offensive man and you're going to help. A bad time to go for a block normally is when you're guarding the shooter. That's when the foul trouble comes in. The point is, shot blocking can be effective defense and it can be a crowd pleaser, but be sure it's the right time to go for the block. But it can be. And by the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. The individual scoring for St. John's, Porter with eight. Jones, uh, Shelton Jones, very active in the first ten minutes, sort of disappeared in the second ten. He got seven big rebounds as well. The key for St. John's is the fact that they're doing a great job defensively in transition. That's what's keeping them in the game. They're 30-30 right now at halftime, and I really give a tribute to their players getting back defensively to shut down UCLA's fast break because UCLA wants to run up and down the floor. Bruin scoring. Trevor Wilson, as you see, had the big first half. They've done a job on force that have really negated the big fella inside who has it, as told me, has really, really improved. He only had two points. He's got two fouls. they got to get him more shots. And Immel is too good a shooter not to get more opportunities, especially from three-point range. Well, Immel hasn't taken that many shots. He's one for three, I think, Keith. You know, you think about St. John's as we watch them on offense right here. There's Harvey down to Shelton Jones. Watch this great baseline move. They hand check him. He just blows by Foster, lays it up on a glass. St. John's, Louis Cornish second, 20th year coaching, 19 consec consecutive postseason births, 14 NCAA, 5 NITs, 15 years he's won 20 or more. What an amazing job he's done in Redman country. All right, St. John starts the second half with the possession. Michael Porter, Matt Cross, Boo Harvey, Shelton Jones, Marco Baldi. And that's Jones having trouble with the handle. Man checking him over there is Trevor Wilson, who is a very aggressive player. They got to get more point production out of Matt Russ, too, from the wing. He's playing the number three position this year. Last year, he was a second guard. There's a steal. Jones tried to force it in. Oh, uh, look at that steal. him and took it all the way and missed it. Did you see him blow by Marco Baldi? Marco looked up and said, look at this thoroughbred. Just turn on the ultra burners. Number 14, Marco Baldi. Foul is on Baldi. That's three on him. And Williams, Jason Williams also has three. See, they want to get the ball to Jones right away against Wilson. He tries to post him up. And he's going to try to take that drive down the lane. There's the help by Richardson. Now look at him turn on his feet. Oh, look at him laying on the floor. Jones says, where, are, where is the ball? Pull. Pull. This guy's got a lot of Muhammad Ali in him. He's cocky and confident, but he's got to be able to go on the court and back it up. What is it now? You coach. Why is a team shooting free throws so poorly? It's amazing. Well, Hazard attributes it to concentration. He brought in a specialist this week, a guy by the name of Larry Faust, the retired high school coach from the San Diego area to work with them on follow through and on mental concentration. Bruins get the lead as they get the first point of the second half. They lead 31-30. That's the first time they've led all day. We've had a couple of times. Inside Baldi. Little short hook, drops in. He's three for three, Keith. They have to look for him also. They don't get the ball inside enough to get some balance out of their offense. Redmond back to the lead by one. Baldi now with six points. Himmel has been quiet. One out of three. This is Richardson. Pump fake gets the man out of his face. Rebound Foster. Short with it. And on the follow, that Richardson, it looked like. Yeah, good offensive rebound. Nice touch. Good fingertips by Pooh Richardson. As we look at Louisville and Kentucky. Wow. 76-75, so there were some sincere feelings in the intra-state matchup. 
Well, Louisville's got a lot of talent. When you talk about Purvis Ellison and Herbert Brook, I think this year they're going to really be tough in that Metro Conference. Bowdy whirls against Foster. Puts it up and in. They got to go to the big horse inside. He'll develop some confidence. He can't just take space. You got to utilize him. Foster standing there flat footed. Even though he's seven feet, Bowdy is 6'11. He's big enough. They look inside to Foster. Nice pass. pass. Back to Emmo. Missed the shot. Nice pass by Foster. Emmo makes the cut down the lane. Harvey trying to go behind the back, got a little fancy and almost lost the ball. Well, Harvey replacing Mark Jackson, who did a great job in his career. The best point guard ever in the history of St. John's. Now playing for Ricky Patino and the Knicks. Harvey holds out in front. That's quarter. Good little baseline jump shot. Those two play well together, Keith. They're making an adjustment to the major college level. But don't forget, they won over 60 games and only lost one in two years in junior college. 73 and one. Wow. See, I knew you had those numbers. I was just testing you. Walker. That's short. And knocked out of bounds off Baldy. See, they lost sight. Watch this right here. Right now, Harvey loses sight of Immel. He cuts down the gut of the defense. Forster with an excellent pass, but Immel does not convert it with the left hand. He'd rather shoot the three-point bomb than the little layup. Richardson handles out in front with 12 points of the game. There's Immel. Nice, soft, lofted jump shot, but it won't go down off the front iron. And St. John's, the kids, got him running. And it's out of bounds. Harvey losing it off the knee. Good. And that's a turnover. Look at Louis Cornesecca saying to Garibaldi. Yeah, he wanted a foul. He said, you're a Faisan. He's talking to him in Italian. Give me a break, will you? Turnovers now. St. John's 11 and UCLA only two. That's Wilson. Short. And here comes Michael Porter. See how he slowed up in junior college. He would have been blowing up the floor. That's the one negative that's used by a lot of the media against Louis Cornesecca. They claim that he doesn't allow them to run enough. They're also playing without uh, Bross, who, Terry Bross, who would be in that front line for himself. They have sprained ligaments. Oh, UCLA what a pass. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! The old days are here, Keith. That's what it was like when a Sidney Wicks or a Curtis Rowe or all the great ones would get out in transition at Pauley Pavilion. Wilson slam dunk, cut St. John's lead to one at 15.55 to go in the game. And that's the first fast break point of the ball game for the Bruins. That's the tempo that Walt Hazard wants. He wants to utilize the great ability in the open court of Boo Richardson. Russ, got to shoot Harvey. That. He's wide open, and he's short off the front iron. Jones misses. Russ rebounds, and he'll have a chance for three. He's your kind of player, Keith. He's a blue-collar worker. He was a member of my old Kurt Rambis team last year for playing so hard and getting maximum out of his talent. Right here's the little jump shot. Now watch Russ number 23. Watch the good offensive rebound. Look at Jones. He's very aggressive. He keeps the ball alive. And here's his teammate, number 23. Look at number four in there, right in the middle of the melee. 6-1. Yeah. Three-point play for Matt Russ. 38-35. St. John's leads. 15-37 to go. And you got a timeout at Pauley Pavilion. The new Honda CRX SI has a new double wishbone suspension system and a new 16-valve fuel-injected engine that has 105 horses. That's a lot of horses. You know, the other day my MCI rep called me up. Says he'd like to stop by with some new ideas. I think my long distance gets complicated again. Then he shows me how I've outgrown my current MCI service. Now with a couple of changes, I can have more efficient, more economical long distance. I couldn't believe it. This MCI guy called me up to lower the bill. Until you call, you'll never know how much better a long-distance company can be. MCI. Let us show you. 
we're not a company, but outstanding people come to us every day. People who want to make a contribution to a team and do work that really counts. People eager to see new places, do the unusual, and find the unusual. People who become your friends for life. People just like you. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the Army. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. It's a ringside summit between two of the top powers. The USA meets number one ranked Cuba in an amateur boxing classic. Live next on ABC Sports. UCLA really wants the run, and St. John's has negated it, but in this sequence off the block shot by Foster, this is the running game. Here's the showman. Here's the magic man. There he is with the great bounce pass. There's the finalizer. He finishes the play in conversion. There's my five top point guards, Keith, my all Thomas Edison, Rivers, Pooh Richardson, Sherman Douglas, Rod Strickland, and P.J. Armstrong. Hey, it'll be rock and roll time tonight in Iowa where those fans really get into it with Arizona and Iowa. Welcome home, Lou Dolson. Richardson now with five assists in the ball game. Who gives it away? That is Walker off the glass, got a foul. Excellent play by Walker. He had good poise. He had the good head fake to get him free for that little shot. 2-2-1 two, two, press. Hughes Baldy in the middle. Two-point lead. St. John's now at 15-10 to go in the ball game. Every game will be a mailbox time, a war for Luke Karnaseka. He doesn't have a team that can blow you away. But down the stretch, if they make their free throws, they're going to win a lot of games. And this is not a vintage St. John's team. This is Shelton Jones. He's got great talent. I watch him. He is a teaser. He's a flat-out teaser. You see that great talent, and you wonder why not for 40 minutes. Immel takes it inside. Missed it. Second time he's missed. Look at this. Side. Wilson lost control of it. And didn't get it down. And St. John's extricates it from the melee as they lead by four, 41-37. That would have been a thunderous dump. Maybe he should have put it on the glass as if the donkey would have kept the handle. Matt Rush. You gotta like him, Keith. He gets most out of his talent. Good move by Brust inside. Seven points for it. He's a transfer from North Carolina. Didn't get any PT with the Michelangelo of coaching Dean Smith and said, I'm going back home to New York. His athletic future probably is in football at tight end. Yeah, he's tough and strong. I knew you'd get that football in here. Greg Foster turns and the big man for the Bruins now. Knocks one down. He's got four in the ball game. They need more than that from their seven-footer. 43-39 St. John. There's the press. You know, we took a look at Hazard so calm on the sideline. You got Karnasucka usually going bananas. They're about as different as the music of Madonna and the music of Barbara Streisand. Baldy. Banged off the boards by Sheldon Jones. Baldy's Coming doing, out as Porter. Baldy's doing a good job inside, Keith. Look at that Porter get up. He's got great legs. Come out of San Jacinto Junior College, where they produced Walter Berry. They produced Tom Henderson. Liddell Eccles now playing for New Orleans, where he put a little too much weight on. He's not in condition. But he's from Virginia. This is Pooh Richardson from Philadelphia. South Philly, he said, I headed for out here, saw the beaches, and I wanted to stay in the sunshine, where most kids from the West say bye-bye or go east. That's a pretty good-sized foul right there by Dave Emmel. You could have taken your choice as they tried to trap Baldy. Now take a look at Pooh Richardson. Here he is playing without the ball, which is very unusual. There's Porter now guarding him. He's going to try to come off a screen, a little curl move. Comes off the screen on a baseline. No communication at all defensively. You must communicate when someone is rubbing a guy off the screen. Ball goes to St. John. Redman, Michael Porter, Blue Harvey. Harvey in the corner. Richardson on him, forces the shot and got it. And they're back to a six-point lead. Their biggest was seven. Richardson can't get it to go down for him. Sheldon Jones lobs it out. They run it. Oh, what a play! Blocked by Foster. And back comes the Bruins. A little showtime. Look at this. He walked. He walked. Jackson took the trip. Oh, he walked. 
feet. They missed the walk in violation. He was fouled, but before he's fouled, he did a little net step. Look at Harvey with the great showman pass. He kicks it out to his running mate. They played together in Chuco, and there's Foster. He says, thou shall not enter thy lane. And on the other end, we had a walk prior to the foul. Craig Jackson, senior, 6'8", out of Denver. Never on really, line. never lived up to the billing. Came out of here as a McDonald's High School All-American, but made a great shot for the calm Mr. Hazard against Arizona last year to beat Arizona at the buzzer. The freshman Gerald Matkins is back in at guard for UCLA as Emil sits down. And it's a 47-42 ball game now. St. John's leading. Sheldon Jones has 11 rebounds in the ball game for the Redmen. The big guy on the front line for UCLA so far today has been Trevor Wilson. See, right now, I would again, I'd go to Shelton Jones. There they go, down into Shelton. I'd go to Shelton. Got it. Thank you, coach. Little two-man play. This is back to Wilson. He missed it. Rebound, Jackson. Jackson runs the court. He'll play hard. He's lost a lot of confidence in his game because he just never was able to live up to all the recognition he received in high school. Rust Hap Jones didn't see him. Couldn't get control and get it to him, and so they have to slow it down. We got another good game, Keith. 49-44, five points, the Red Men lead. Inside, Baldi turns to the baseline. That'll be a walk. Watch Barnes suck on the sideline. Louis Wrench, look at him right there. You gotta love this little guy. Inside, they don't get it, and St. John's 5-5. Five -five. Fancy perfuming aftershave. It's got to be a quarterback's locker. Real guys who get mud on their uniforms use rugged, honest stuff. Ice blue aqua velva. There's something about today's aqua velva man. Look for aqua velva Christmas gift sets. Year in, year out, you expect quite a lot out of your car. But just what have you put into it lately? Give your car the good life with STP gas treatment. Listen to the heartbeat. Now Chevy announces $500 cash back on every new Chevy S10 pickup, every new 88 Chevy S10 Blazer, and advanced full-size Chevy CK pickup. $500 cash back. And that's on top of big savings and option packages. Your kind of Chevy, your kind of options. Plus $500 cash back. But hurry, time's limited. The heartbeat of America. We're at Foley Pavilion in Los Angeles with UCLA hosting St. John's. We were 30-30 at halftime. Right now, St. John's has the lead, and they are controlling the tempo of this ball game as they lead by five, 49-44. And no, Teo Stevenson is no longer a member of the Cuban boxing team. Chris Schenkel and Carlos Palomino are down in Santa Clara, Cuba. <laughs> Well, was that old line better thee than me? Look at this right here, Keith. Overtime. Welcome home. Rodney Strickland is back. He had academic problems and came back. Notre Dame's going to have a great, great year, though. I really believe they're going to win their 20-plus again for the fourth year in a row. And David Rivers is just a tremendous guard, but so is Rod Strickland. And so is the guy we're watching here, Drew Richardson. Richardson and Matkins out in front. For UCLA, the front line is Wilson for Foster 32, and this is Craig Jackson. Oh, and look Richardson, at that little, little move, got his man up, misses the shot. Wilson rebounds it. Inside, Jackson. Jackson wanted the ball. He was shaking. His legs were shaking. He was saying, please, Trevor, give me the ball. He also had a full morning in the uh, paint. 
Yeah, he was down to that thing. They forgot about counting those three. <laughs> All right, St. John's coming up the court. Take it to Jason Williams. Ten second violation. And ten seconds. That's the second time that UCLA has forced a turnover out of St. John's in their failure to handle the ball. In a situation like this with these two Greyhounds back there, he's got to let them go. Yeah, they want to go, get too. get across that ten second line, don't they? That's you. 13 turnovers for St. John's. Shot is up by Richardson and good. UCLA has turned it over only three times. Well, St. John is doing good work on the backboards. They're canceling it out with the turnover. Yeah, they're breaking down. UCLA hasn't been able to convert off the turnover. They did the last possession. Williams is in, number 11 for St. John, coming to the top of the key, calling timeout. Baldy is out of the ball game right now. That's Rules an excellent run timeout. Six straight points. St. John by one at 10.09 to play. Back after this commercial and a word from our local state. Today, Maryland and LSU, another good one. I know you're happy. One of your Georgia boys, Cedric Jenkins, tipped one in at the buzzer for Kentucky and had him dancing at Rupp Arena. You love those Georgia guys. No, oh, I just like the blue-collar guys that go down inside. I, they're they're kind of like the offensive linemen to me. They, <laughs> they give themselves up. Your favorite guy, Keith Jackson, said, I come to Oklahoma and I feel like a solo cellist. They never throw me the ball. You wait. <laughs> wait till they turn him loose. Big possession right now after the timeout. See if they have a set play. Look at the turnovers. 13 for St. John's. St. John's leading by a point, however, as Jason Williams goes in. Off the back iron. Rebound Foster. Out to Matkin. Here comes Richardson. Throwing. Wave it off. No. Charging. Wave it off. Who uh, says, I want the goal? The ref says, no, Poo. Look at the calm what has it. One of the greatest guards ever at UCLA where he hooked up with Gail Goodrich. Let's take a look right here. Watch Harvey number three. He gives his body up. He gets in front of Richardson. Oh, he's there. He's there. Excellent ball. Excellent ball by Jimmy Clark. Pac-10 officials on the game. Book a turn here. Garibaldi and Jimmy Clark. All right, Harvey handles up. For St. John, the thrust comes to help. They send Jones inside, opens it up for Harvey, got a bounce. Who Harvey with good penetration Ooh, over the gap. Three-point lead, long lead pass, Wilson saves it. And gets it back from Richardson, won't take it, goes across with it to Matkin. Matkin scored 51 in a high school game last year. He's got great scoring ability. Porter almost picked Richardson's pocket. Matkins lets it fly. No. Rebound, St. John. Shelton Jones in the backcourt. They're taking so long to get it up over the 10-second line. And finally, they've got it in front court. Shelton Jones again. You got to go to your horse. You got to go to Jones here. They missed him. They had him wide yep, open on the box. Inside, William. Short off the front iron. Rebound, Wilson. The last two possessions, Jason Wolf Williams wanted the ball and has shot the ball coming off the bench. Foul oh, Harvey. Time remaining, 8.38. St. John's leading by three, 51-48. Foul on number but three, Boo when you got eight and a half minutes to play, and you've only scored 48 points against St. John's, you're playing lose game. You're playing his tempo. He likes to keep the game in his 60s. Come on, come on. He's had some overtime games already, beating Fordham in double overtime, beating Loyola of Marymount for West End in overtime. There's a foul on Brust. Brust has got to give him a little bit more offense, Keith. He just can't stay on the floor the minutes he plays and just be solely a defensive player, especially at the wing position, where he's replacing Willie Glass, who was cut by the Los Angeles Lakers. Foul, Santa, St. John's four, UCLA three team. Oh, they missed the foul on Wilson. They mugged him inside. Yes, they did. That was a Times Square mugging right there on the interior. Richardson will bring it back out. Reset the big people down inside. Jackson, Jackson came on to join the front line. I think they've been a little rougher in there. He gave him a real spark off the bench. Jackson did. Foster. There's a foul. Foul is on Jason Williams. Now you've got this situation in fouls. Williams has four. Baldy, Harvey, and Brusk all have three personal fouls. 
Basically, that's not a bad foul as we watch Rustin Williams. Wilson right here on the out of bounds, number four. Look at Wilson right now. I mean, does he get mugged right here? Look at Brust. He throws a block at him. He clears him out. He wants to play for Donahue in UCLA. Not a bad foul. You know what Forster is on the line? Six for 17. Yeah, Greg. Oh. You wouldn't know it by that. He quieted me down on that one. <laughs> Took a little wink over here. Maybe that Larry Faust worked, the guy that worked with him this week. Free throw expert. Oh, oh. Hey, oh, there's one. There's a brick. I think that shows you the real side of Mr. Forster on the line. Two points, St. John's lead. Eight minutes to go now as Harvey walks it up. These He's kids up. just all came out of uh, a quarterfinals, uh, that is, final tests of the quarter. And they didn't get into practice last night till 7 o'clock. Inside, Jones. Thrust comes across the lane. There's no opening there as Baldy comes back into the lineup. And Williams leaves. Matt puts it up. Oh, in and out. Rebound, Joe. The real Jones has really been here. He's done a tremendous job rebounding. He's not playing like a member of my all mystery team. An enigma. One day there, one day not there. He's got 13 rebounds in the game. Yeah, very active on a glass. That's Craig Jackson. Back it goes to Matkins. Back to Jackson. And that's short. Wilson, however, chases it down and saves it. Great hustle by Wilson. And it's worth two points. Credit that goal to Mr. Wilson, not Boo Richardson. A hustling, scrappy play. Got him a big deuce. I'll tell you what, if Wall Hazard ever gets three people up on the front line that'll play with a reckless abandon that Wilson does, they'll be a terror. They'll be tough to beat. Remember, they lost to some good teams. Brigham Young, who beat them, is an excellent team. They're undefeated. And Temple is one of the top ten teams in the nation. Behind Valdi. <laughs> <laughs> a moving pick there. Wow. <laughs> My blocking back. Wow. My personal protector. That's Porter. That's short. That's out of his range, Keith. He's not that kind of shooter. Take a look at a hustle right now by Trevor Wilson, number four. The ball is going to be going outside. Here he comes. Look at that dynamite hustle. Great balance. And he gets the assist to Boo Richardson for the score. All right, UCLA with a basket can tie again. 6.15 to go in the game. 53-51, St. John. They're going to try to reverse the ball to Richardson. Oh, they reverse it back the other way. Wilson, not a shot that Walt Hazard wanted. No, oh, that's been their problem, he said, late in the game, shot selection. Same thing right now. They don't go inside to Jones enough. They got to get it to Jones. They're putting Jackson on him, who's a good defensive player. Got to get it to him. There's a foul right there. Jackson, but he got away with it. They want Jones to stay inside. They think he can get away from Jackson. Rush saved that one. Valde comes out on top to help. And that's out of bounds. They're getting an education. John. Keith, they're getting an education on playing on the road inside. You're at home, that whistle would have been blown. Twenty years coaching at St. John's, 38 coaching in his career. Harvey won't go. Rebound. Swept out of there by Jackson. Nobody bounce. minutes and 23 seconds to play in the game. And once again, we're all even at 53. Line. No one rotated back on Harvey, and it was an easy layup. There are three phases to the running game. Phase one, possession right here. Phase two is to attack right here. And phase three is to finalize and to convert right here. And what an exclamation point that was. And the game has been tied nine times, and we've got 5.23 to go. That was simply a mental breakdown, Keith. You have to rotate back when your teammate, the other guard, penetrates. Porter did not rotate back to give help for Harvard. All right, St. John's will bring it in, and the Bruins go down to meet him in front court. This press is done basically to take you out of your half-court rhythm. It's really been troublesome in this game. Yes, it has. It's forced uh, 
three turnovers, I believe, off the press. Rust coming around. Jackson's really playing Jones tough, 31. Porter puts it up, spins out, and a whistle. This is the kind of game last year, if it's close, when they won 21 games, Mark Jackson would take over. Right now, watch Jones inside being played. Look at him denying the ball, getting over the screen, number 52. He's beating, now he's fronting him inside. Oh, he's following right there. He's leaning on him. There's 31. He wants the ball to the baseline. See, they really don't look for him in a proper way. They haven't developed the rhythm yet. Porter gets the first one, 13 points for him now. Three out of three from the line. Foul was on Matt Gins, his first of the ball game. As you mentioned earlier, he has a detached retina. That's why he wears the goggles as he converts that free throw. Another guy that had that detached retina was Sugar Ray Leonard and also David Bing when he played for the Pistons. Redmond by two. The zone in right now for the first time, Keach. During a timeout, they went to a zone, like a 1-3-1 one -one zone. A trademark of Karnaseka basketball teams, and that's what it can produce right there. That supporter didn't quite come away with it. We got a shot clock problem as uh, Jimmy Clark goes over to inform with the Turner and the bench. The shot clock didn't start going. One of the problems as we look at the shot clock for UCLA has been patience versus the zone. Temple zoned them. They were zoned by Brigham Young. And right now, they go to the zone at a key time in the game. St. John's is going to be important for War Hazard to really attack that zone in the gap. Karnaseka and Hazard are together. You can only talk to an official if both coaches are together. There can't be any conversation between coach and an official this year as they're really emphasizing bench decorum. They want 22 seconds on the clock, and they're not getting it up there. I guess the thing might have Little Louis. pooped they, up. They can't understand Louis. Louis talking in his Casey Stengel lease right now. <laughs> they have no idea what he's saying. Because <laughs> he doesn't understand himself. How can they understand him? He's beautiful. I love him. And well, he speaks seven languages, doesn't he? One of them's got to work. <laughs> You talk about a guy that speaks all kinds of languages. Next week, we got Valvano. He's got all those writers calm down south. They can't understand his New York <laughs> lingo. All right, here we go with 22 seconds on the shot clock now. St. John's by three, four and a half minutes to play in the game. They got to get the ball in the hands of Richardson and let him make something happen. They got to get it to 24. Uh, big guys are more active here in the second half on the front line. Wilson takes it. He's been a star, Trevor Wilson. Yep, it's been his game. A little running one-hander, a la Bob Cousy style. They trap Russ, but he gets it ahead to Baldy. Baldy's got Porter, and Porter had a shot and didn't go. This is where you have to be a big-time player right now if you're Shelton Jones. Your team needs a basket badly. Oh! That's from Michael Porter. Michael Porter. He's not He's afraid. 14 points. He's not He's afraid. Average. Ball lost by Foster. See him fussing over the loose ball instead of hustling on back and squaring up. But fortunately, St. John's is not a running team, and so Harvey walks it up. That's a foul on Emil. And Emil hasn't had a good day. The last possession was not really what Walt Hazard wanted. There's a look at Foster. The ball comes off his chest, goes out of bounds. Good play by Matt Russ defensively. Emil picking up his third personal foul. Big gun so far in the game individually. Trevor Wilson with 18. The new Honda CRX SI has a new double wishbone suspension system and a new 16 valve fuel injected engine that has 105 horses. That's a lot of horses. We go above and beyond just like you. Above and beyond what we have to do. Insuring the best in life for you. When it comes to life insurance, nobody goes above and beyond like your prudential representative. You take pride in your life, so do we. Going above and beyond is our policy. Above and beyond. 
Well, you see the time remaining. You see a uh, Carter second type score. And remember, this is a St. John's team that has survived two very close tough ball games. Uh, one of them double overtime. Remember, coming up right after the ball game, U.S. Cuba, amateur boxing live out of Santa Clara. And uh, I must very honestly and frankly tell you that's not the, the front line U.S. amateur boxing team, but it's it's a move, a considered move by the uh, U.S. amateur boxing people to season their young people and get ready for 1988. And Kansas, the Jayhawks into Raleigh against North Carolina State here on ABC next Saturday at 4 Eastern time. That means Danny Manning, certainly a lock. I said last week, the biggest lock since Yale for being the player of the year, unless he loses it himself. You know, Keith, you made a really interesting point about St. John's winning the close games as we look at Trevor Wilson, who's been a star today. It's very important for War Hazard's team after losing three games in a row, losing several games down the stretch, losing two in a row at home, to win this game right now on his own living room floor. As we look at a very calm Walt Hazard who was a battler and a real scrapper when he played. St. John's, Karnaseka seems to get his kids to be able to win when the game is on the line. All right, Boo Harvey handling it as St. John's has the same unit out there. And so for that matter does UCLA and Baldy inside got away with it and scores the basket. He did get away with one. He cleared some bodies. I believe they got to go to Marco Baldi. My little fellow Paisan, Mr. Baldi. Watch him here from out of Italy. There is the little jump shot on the baseline. Now watch Baldi come off the offensive force. I mean, he just clears Foster out of the way. Big, strong, tough move by number 14. That foul was on Craig Jackson. And he got his three-pointer, and suddenly it's a five-point ball game. The last possession was not a good shot by UCLA. They had the turnover, but Foster kicking it out of bounds. They need a big basket here. Maybe Immel for three. Well, he has. He's been kind of a, kind of cold today, and there's another turnover off the hands of Foster. See execution down the stretch. Warren Hazard and I were talking before the game. If Pooh Richardson wants to be recognized as a great, great guard, he's got to take the game over in the last four minutes of winning time. John uh -oh. Uh -oh. Foster crashes into him. Almost got his slam anyway. Almost was an intentional foul, which would have mean two shots plus possession. But he goes up to challenge him on the break. I couldn't be as calm as Mr. Hazard on that sideline. Interesting thing right here, though, uh, now. You saw Pooh Richardson talking to Greg Foster. There's a very good reason for that, because Foster oftentimes will go into a blue fuck. He gets very angry. And Walt has worked and worked and worked with him over on self-control. Forget it, and let's go play hard again. Last year, he had a major problem with that, Keith. You're 100% accurate if you just put a... Good foul shot right there by Jones. If you just put an arm on him as we look at Foster, he would lose his cool. They say he has really worked at that and has learned how to control his emotion. That's 13 points and 14 rebounds for Shelton Jones. A big pair right there out of the senior from Amityville, New York, where it was called the Amityville, Amityville Parra. Help me out with that word. <laughs> it's now seven points, third time in the game. The St. John's is led by seven. Richardson takes it inside, and inside there's a whistle. Well, they get the block on. Porter right there. Porter's a good defender. Look at Porter, number four, taking the challenge right now, playing Pooh Richardson. He's got good lateral quickness. Well, he bumps him. He's not really in what we call legal defensive position to start with, facing the offensive player with both feet on the ground. I like two things about Michael Porter. One, he's not afraid to look for the big shot. And number two, he wants to challenge defensively. They rotated. They took Harvey off of Richardson and put a quarter on him. 62-56. Six-point lead for the Redmen. Now five as Richardson makes both three throws. And Pooh now 20 points, five assists. Bruins after him in the backcourt. And finally ahead to Porter to the corner to Jones. They got to try to use some of the clock. 45 second clock. Try to really milk it and work the clock for the high percentage shot. 
Remember, foul shooting could be the key. UCLA is shooting under 60% as a team on a free throw line. Oh, good ball movement. That's coaching. That's coaching. Coming up on 15 seconds on the clock, and Porter locks one from the ceiling and gets it. He wants to rock with the game on the line. Excellent execution. UCLA needs a big play right here. It's a seven-point lead again for St. John. That's probably not the shot that Hazard had in mind. Matkins is coming back into the game, and Emil's going to go out for UCLA. Now they need foot speed and quickness. Now they've got to really hound the ball. Well, psychologically, your confidence begins to get shattered if you continually lose on your own living room floor late in the game. They lost to Brigham Young and Temple here. Jackson with a rainbow. Not no. Shot. Rebound. It's Richardson and Bowdy. And the possession will go to St. John. Jackson is probably the last option you would want in that sequence. I know he beat Arizona at the buzzer, but right here. Now they've changed the possession uh, arrow. They switched it because the last time it went to St. John. Point of seconds, he knows all along. He's trying to play a little con game. See, Walt Hazard, in a day of wacko coaches going bananas on the sideline, he is like a dinosaur. I mean, in terms of, he's so unique, so calm, cool. I'd be going totally bananas here. Well, like somebody said a long time ago, he ain't playing. That's true. Players got to play and execute what you practice. There seems to be some confusion, confusion right now on the alternate possession rule. Well, obviously, both bench must keep their own chart. I usually keep it, and I did right now, and I want you to slap my hand because I usually have it just in case there was a breakdown, but I don't have it now. Well, I'm of the opinion the last possession went to St. John. That's the way I had it, Mark. It must because Louis so calm. He says, yes, it's their ball. I'll let them have it. It was 30-30 at halftime. The game has been tied nine times. St. John's leading right now by seven with 154 to play in the game. And Trevor Wilson shot a little long. Kevin Walker. Kevin Walker. Owen blocked out on Walker. Walker gets the lane, gets the open layup. Here comes the full court trap. Not the 2-2-1. Two, two, See, they're going to spread the court. They got to look to Jones right here. He's wide open. Bowdy has it. They had Jones wide open. There's a foul on Matkin. St. John's uh, looks a little ragged. And getting the ball up against the press. But if they can come in here after a cross-country trip and win one, they'll go home a lot wiser. Well, this would be a big win. You got the East versus the West. I know we had Gorbachev and Reagan, East-West, the Summit. These two guys have their own little Summit going right now. Karnaseka and Hazard. Marco Valdi in free throws today. St. John's 8 of 8. UCLA 9 of 15. Baldi was tough last year at the end of the year. He won a big game for them in the NCAA, beating Wichita State. Eddie Fogler, who's done a solid job with that program. Lane is again seven with a minute and a half to play in the game. It's a big win for Lou Kornacek, and as you said earlier, the Big East versus the Pac-10. And you got a timeout. Clock has stopped at one, three, four. And a seven-point lead for the Red Wings. The shape is aerodynamically clean. The stance, low over a double wishbone suspension. The design is an effective sound barrier against road and traffic noise. The Honda Accord LXI. It lowers the sound of speed. We go above and beyond just like you. Above and beyond what we have to do. Investing in what's right for you. Your Prudential representative helps your money work hard with CDs, mutual funds, and more. You work hard, so do we. To make what you work for a reality. From us, from Prudential, above. Well, I hope things go well for this one. This is a very difficult, tricky pickup from down that region. I don't know if they can still do it direct or not. I remember 1974, the first time that we did it, we had to send the picture 
93,000 miles. Wow. Had to go all the way into Czechoslovakia and then come back across into the top before we could see it here. I'm too dumb to figure out all that well, technical stuff. Frank Gifford was in the studio, and we'd have to take a 96-second break in Cuba, in Havana at that time. And Frank could fill in New York while the satellite turned. <laughs> and then you could get the rest of the picture. It's quite an adventure, and it'll be, it'll be an enjoyable thing. All right, here we go in the final throws of this ball game. Seven points, St. John's lead. With a minute 25 to go, Pooh Richardson, Trevor Wilson, the big guns today for the Bruins. But that is Walker out of the corner getting the basket. Well, he's their best long-range shooter, Walker. But Immel's certainly capable of shooting the three-point shot as well. He just pulled him within sight. Uh-oh. That's thrown away. Really sloppy play right now at the end of the game against the press for Luke Parnasekas' team. Four-point lead only after that three-pointer by Walker. Don't have to go for three now. Got to go inside and maybe get the high percentage one unless the open three for Walker's there because he's got that kind of range. But you don't one really minute. need it. You don't need three, Keith. See, they're playing for the three. That's not, that's not really great strategy. Wilson right had it, lost it. Baldy gets it. Booker Turner calls jump ball. It goes to St. John. Let me explain why the three is unimportant in that situation. You're down four points. You've got to take the high percentage shot. Now, if Walker is free for a good shot, he forced that one, fine. But you need two possessions, even if you score the three. St. John's ball. Craig Jackson is coming back onto the floor, and Kevin Walker is going out. And what he may try to do here is put Jackson in for defense and get uh, Walker back in for offense. Exactly. They're substituting in terms of possession. See, they got the diagonal pass right here to Jones. who can handle the ball. There's a foul. Matkin is Bob Garibaldi. Remember the big right-hander? He made that call. He's about as big as anybody out there on the court, so there ain't a whole lot of arguing. Not going to be some arguing with him. But you know, right there is another example, Keith. We talk about the intentional foul. Supposedly, if you're going for the ball, they'll call a one and one. But the intent of the rule was so that teams would not deliberately foul to stop the clock. I don't think officials are calling that late like they should. I see situations where they're really deliberately fouling. We had it in the Kentucky Indiana game. That's called a one plus one, so it's 67 62. Back to a five point lead for St. John. Let's see if it's intentional right here. Well, he went for the ball. Oh, he's scrapping for the he's ball. He's scrapping here. for the ball right here. Yep. Yeah, that's a good call by Garibaldi. Good call. Jones rolls it in to make it a six point St. John's lead with 44 seconds to play. Jones, 15 points, 14 rebounds. Now you've got to go for three because you've got to reduce the number of possessions. You need two threes. Well, they don't have their man in there. Here he is. Now he's got the ball. And it won't go down. The tip won't go down. Rebound Richardson throws up a brick. And Brust gets it. Who was off balance, hanging and hanging, and now commits the foul. Who Richardson has not done the job late in the game. He's been missing in action, has not taken the game over like he should. There's Luigi Cornesecca, uh, Mayor Cut. Look at a little dance. A little Italian Tarantella. Come on, Luis, shake and bake. He's the John Travolta of coaching on the sideline. Look at him. Look at him right here. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it, Luis. <laughs> look at that dance. 21 Nine seconds. Five. St. John's has got himself a win, I think. Well, the mentor, the man up in heaven, Joe Lapchick, is certainly happy for his little guy. Russ misses the free throw. He's done some job in the Big East, and what a league that has become under the direction of Dave Gavitt over the last seven years. As you look right here, they haven't lost three straight of Foley Pavilion. Knocks that one in to make it again a seven-point lead. Got a lane violation called against UCLA. That's why he's shooting a third time. And so he comes out of it. The biggest lead of the ball game is 70 to 62. And St. John's is 12 of 12 from the foul line. As Richardson goes blazing in and gets a two-pointer, stopping the clock on a timeout with 14 seconds. Richardson really, I think, is pressing a little bit. He's so talented. He's multi-dimensional with the basketball. 
This new corner second is hungry kids. They got to be mighty excited. They, they've been stealing some games with games that could have been on the L side with Fordham and Loyola Marymount today. And that's a positive sign as they get ready for Big East action. Pooh Richardson has scored 22 points today. That is his career high at UCLA. There's our other game, and it's going back and forth and back and forth as it figured it figured to. Norman Sloan with a big, big win today. Well, that's a little big margin. Georgetown beating up on a St. Leo. St. Leo, that sounds like my parish in Elmwood Park, New Jersey, where I grew up as a kid. And look at Louisville and Kentucky and Notre Dame loses a heartbreaker. You know, you mentioned Louisville, the Metro Conference, ready for this. I don't understand the logic of how the athletic directors are going to permit Virginia Tech and also they're going to permit South Carolina to play in a postseason tournament. Don't be shocked if Louisville doesn't try to bolt the league if they don't change that because I understand well, their administrators are upset. They were mad as a hornet last year when uh, Memphis State played in the tournament. And I watched South Carolina uh, beat Alabama the other night. Virginia Over Tech. You joined them. Yeah. And Southern California. If you're on probation from the NCAA, they should not be permitted to play in that tournament. I don't understand the logic there at all. Yes, you do. Of course uh, you do. Money. <laughs> <laughs> no mystery. Double. Six points, St. John's lead, 14 seconds. We go in the ball game. And it's been the discipline and control. That's a bad pass. He had Porter breaking away, and he just simply didn't fire the ball soon enough because Michael Porter was just long gone. Yeah, he was ready for one of his high slam jammers. Remember, he's probably one of the greatest leapers in college basketball, Porter. They've got it in hand, but they're going the wrong way with it. Game is just about over, and they've stopped the clock with only two ticks remaining on the clock. Foul is on number 24. Coach Mahoney is assisting coach as they really are excited and ecstatic as they head back to New York City with a big W that they gain here on the West Coast. So that'll make St. John's 5-1. and one. UCLA losing their third straight at home will drop to 1-4. and four. They have a date with Niagara, then they play in their holiday festival. Luke, Luke Karnasek is certainly happy, but not Wall Hazard. And then they play Maris. Maris has got one of the best big kids in the country, Rick Smith, a tremendous offensive player, a seven-footer for Maris. knocks it in and it is 72 64 an eight point lead and an eight point win for the St. John's Redmen. So it's a big one for St. John's. Their record now goes to five and one as they defeat UCLA 72 64. Fast break going and then California second.